This month for Drifto, I added a wrong way indicator. The indicator itself is super basic, just a wobbly image. But what's happening behind the scenes to figure out when to show it is a little less basic. How do racing games know you're traveling in the right direction? The most common method is using checkpoints. By keeping track of the checkpoints the vehicle has passed and where it currently is, we can get a rough idea of where it's traveling. But that's not quite enough for Drifto. The approach I've chosen to implement works by finding the distance traveled in terms of road pieces. The idea is at any one point, we can determine what piece the car is on and how far through it it is. For anyone new here, the road in Drifto is procedurally generated. Choosing from a handful of possible road pieces, Drifto will align them all up to create one infinite random road. By defining some continuous line along each piece of road with a bunch of nodes, we can figure out the closest point on the line to the car. Then, by knowing the number of each node and what road piece it belongs to, we can get the global distances and interplay between them to get the car's distance. The complexity of the system lies in finding this closest point. If we were to do just a simple vector projection on the closest section, there would be some areas that aren't counted and some that are counted twice, which would give an inconsistent distance reading. What we need to do here is skew the projection, such that these invalid areas don't exist. The first step in finding the skew projection is knowing what section the car is on. At the closest node to the car, we can find the line that will separate the previous and the next section. The normal of this divider is just the sum of the directions of each section it divides. Since the system works in three dimensions, this divider will actually be a plane, but I'll continue to visualize it in two dimensions. The dot product between this normal and the direction from the closest node to the car will tell us what section it's in. It will be negative for the previous, positive for the next. If we get the distance of the car to the start boundary of the section along the direction of the section itself, and divided by the total distance between the boundaries along this line, we get the skew prediction value we're after. To get these intersections, we do need to dabble in some more vector math, but it's all very well documented, so I'll spare the details. Finally, by using this value to interpolate between the global distance of each node, we have the global distance of the car measured in road sections. With this setup, finding the direction the car is traveling can be done by comparing where it is now with where it was on the last frame. And because the core of the system is about getting a distance, it's also used to pause points when the car is in an area it's already been. So you can't keep going over the same section or getting infinite points by doing donuts for ages. To help simplify a little bit and improve performance, the direction tracker first looks at the road piece number and compares it to that of the last update. If it's gone up, we must be going forwards. If it's gone down, we must be going backwards. Only if it's the same do we bother finding how far through the current piece the car is. Doing this means we only have to do the distance check on nodes in that one piece, rather than every node in the world. I also finally implemented a smooth resume after leaving the pause menu, so instead of being thrown back into the game at full speed, you've now got a moment to get back into it. And there's now a high score indicator in the main game UI. Now as soon as your score clicks over to being a new high, you get this little trophy. I've also been hard at work fixing the road generation. The new system is now in its own dedicated public repository, a link for that is in the description. I'm excited for this to be finished and to share how it works. And lastly, I set up a basic buy me a coffee page. So if you'd like to show your support even more than you already are just by watching this, you now can. That's it for this month. This devlog took longer than usual as I was learning how to use Motion Canvas for the animations. It's a really cool open source tool by Arthur Fischl. He does an amazing job of explaining abstract ideas with it over on his own channel. A friendly reminder to check out the game on the app and the Play Store. Come say hi on the Discord server and stream the soundtrack for Drifto over on Spotify. All links are in the description. I'll smell you later.